Hi everyone, welcome to our presentation of the group loss paper. My name is Ismail and this is a joint work with my advisors Laura and Marcello and my colleagues Sebastiano and Alessandro. In our group we are very interested in the task of object retrieval. The most famous method for object retrieval is the triplet loss. You might have heard that the triplet loss considers triplets consists of an anchor, a positive and a negative. The goal of the loss is to learn similar embeddings for the anchor and the positive while the embedding of the negative sample should be different from that of the anchor. As you can see in the picture here, in the triplet, we consider only two relations. When we generalize to n triplets, we see that the number of relation is 2n divided by 3. This is a bit problematic, because not all the information in the mini-batch is being used. In fact, in order to be able to train a network with triplet loss, researchers need to consider things like doing intelligent sampling, hard negative mining, or multitask learning. Wouldn't it be cool if we can use all the relation in the mean batch instead, and by doing so, not needing to use sampling heuristics to train our network efficiently? This is exactly what we are going to do with our group loss. The group loss consists of three main building blocks, initialization, refinement, and the loss computation, blocks that are built on top of a convolutional neural network. The main goal of our loss function is to refine the prediction of the neural network based on an iterative procedure that considers the similarities between all the images in the mini-batch. So given a mini-batch that consists of images belonging to k different classes, a CNN first generates their embeddings and class priors. Then from the embeddings, we build the similarity matrix of size n by n, where n is the number of images in the mini-batch. Based on the similarity matrix, we refine the class predictions in an iterative procedure. Finally, we compute the cross entropy loss in every prediction and we backpropagate the gradients on the CNN. Let's dig deeper into each of the blocks. The initialization consists of two parts, initializing the prior matrix and initializing the similarity matrix. For the prior matrix, we simply store the softmax projections of each sample in the mini-batch. In order to propagate some noiseless information, we set some of this prediction to one hot labeling that we get from the ground truth. These images, which we call anchors, guide the remaining images towards a correct labeling. For similarity matrix, we compute the Pearson's correlation between all the pairs of the embeddings that are present in the mini batch. Here comes the most important part of our work, the refinement procedure. Before we precisely define it, let's check a toy example in order to build some intuition. Let's assume that our mini-batch has three images, A, B, and C. Where images B and C are very similar to each other, images A and B are not similar at all, and images A and C are just a tiny bit similar. We also see the matrix of priors. It seems that the network has done a pretty bad job on classifying sample C giving it the same score for each of the possible four classes. On the other hand, samples A and B are anchors, so they are set to the ground truth. Now, what our method does is to combine these two sources of information in a single matrix. We see that in the first iteration, the probability of sample C belonging to class 2 has increased quite a bit because of image B, which is similar to image C, belongs to class 2. Similarly, we see a tiny increase in its probability for class one, because while not very similar to A, there exists some similarity that contributes to this increase. The probability for the other two classes has decreased. By continuing this iterative procedure, we see that in the end, C converges to label two with almost total certainty. Let's see the math behind this. We are going to use an optimization technique called replicated dynamics, which comes from evolutionary game theory. In the numerator, we have this propagation of information, while in the denominator, we normalize the values in order to stay in probability space, for the probability of each prediction to sum up to one. We see that this is an, an iterative process that goes from time t to time t plus one. Essentially, the element pi is going to indicate the similarity between i and g, so between the element i, which we are analyzing to all the other elements in the mini-batch. So here we have the priors to all the elements j having some particular class lambda. 
What we're looking here is looking at the other elements in the mini batch. And then we take all of these priors that elements J are classified as class lambda, and we multiply them with the similarity that they have with image I, the image we are analyzing. Basically, this is a weighted sum of all other probabilities. So if I'm very similar to some other image, and that image has a very high probability for some class lambda, then that image is going to affect me on being classified as class lambda. So the value of pi i lambda is going to be increased. In other words, pi i lambda measures the support that the current mini batch gives to image i for belonging to class lambda. So it measures if the mini batch agrees that image i picks, uh, picks the class lambda. Of course, we do this not for image i, but for all the images in the mini batch in a fast vectorized procedure, as can be seen here. Indeed, this is a very cheap computation that barely increases the time to perform forward and backward pass. Finally, we compute the cross entropy loss function in these predictions, and we backpropagate the gradients over the network. Despite that our method has no parameters to learn, so there is no learnable matrix here, its gradients can be computed to the previous layers of the neural network, forcing the network to build embeddings that not only classify images correctly, after all, we are not really interested in the classification accuracy, but also to generate very similar embeddings to images belonging to the same class. This is totally different from softmax cross entropy loss that considers every image in isolation. Here we show the entire algorithm. Our CNN computes the priors and the feature embeddings via the forward pass, and it uses those embeddings to build a similarity matrix. Then on an iterative procedure, it mixes the prior information with the similarity information, refining the priors. Finally, our method computes cross entropy, and it passes the gradients via backpropagation to the network. Our simple method is very effective. It outperforms the classical loss functions by a huge distance in all three standard data sets used for this task. In fact, even if we consider modern losses that use some sampling technique, our method outperforms all of them, except multi-similarity loss, which gets the same results as ours in Coop dataset, worse results in cars, and better results in Stanford online products. Our ensemble that is built by only concatenating in the inference stage the features of five independently trained networks outperforms all the other ensembles, even if some of them use sophisticated blocks like attention. We further see that the results of our method in a very different family of networks, studying the behavior of results when the number of parameters increases and how transferable are all the hyperparameters between inceptions and dense net networks. We see that the results further improve with the largest network reaching the best results. Furthermore, with a minimal amount of hyperparameters tuning, the results can be increased by a further two percentage points. In the paper, we show a bunch of qualitative results, such as retrieval examples, and TSNE, where we see the images of the same class being clustered in particular parts of the embedding space. We further give a detailed robustness analysis, showing that our method is robust to the choice of hyperparameters and is faster than most of the other methods. Finally, we see an interesting effect of our method. Unlike other methods like PNCA or deep spectral clustering that reach extremely high accuracies in the training set, the performance of our method in the training set is not much higher than that on the testing set. This leads us to think that by considering everything in the mini batch, our method is actually introduced a new form of regularization that allows the networks to generalize better. To show this better, we turned out the L2 regularization and still reach very similar results further enforcing our hypothesis. Thank you for your attention, and we would be happy to chat with you about the group loss.